stay on there. I'm not trying to waste my time on there no more. It ain't. I might come back and just use it for this show. Or other things that can make money. <laughs> Is it shit worth money? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Well, so, well, well, today's well, topic. <laughs> Welcome to another episode of Above <laughs> Average Black. <laughs> Welcome to another topic. Another topic. Another episode of Above Average Black Moon with yours truly, Chris Pedro Senior. Chris Jr., <clears throat> as always, here to empower, inspire, <clears throat> and uplift the black community. Uh, Desmond Pender here to say like, follow, subscribe, share, comment, and drink more water. I see you with the gallon here. Yeah. My dad was just saying how if he was to do this, he'd be in the bathroom maybe 20 times a day. <laughs> well, we thank you for making that public knowledge. <laughs> That's greatly appreciated. It's okay. But um that's an adult <clears throat> thing. I feel like yeah, that anybody that's up there top tier to age is gonna do that. You know? No, but but I do <laughs> before we get into a topic, I drink a lot of water. And like now I'm on one of my journeys. So, you know, um intermediate journey, because I'm with your mom. So, you know, um Monday through Friday, no bread, no chocolate, no pasta. Woo. So then, you know, we allow we treat ourselves, <clears throat> you know, on the weekends. That last weekend was a binge because we in Hershey. I, I'm, so that kind of helped. <laughs> hey, no no, chocolate. No chocolate, then you go to Hershey. <laughs> yeah, man. After a week of having no chocolate, you know, um, you I, I we go to Hershey and everything is chocolate. And the sad part about it is, you know, you, your taste is kind of up there because you haven't had it. And now it's like, man, it's easy this week. I don't want to see chocolate. <laughs> <laughs> I don't want to see chocolate, man. It's like, I mean, it was a great experience. We went to the spa. I mean, it was. You know, it was all that. We had yeah. a ball. We did. We had a ball. Man. But it still seems <clears> tough, the breaking of no chocolate, no bread. I'm trying to get on that path right now. Just well, you know like what? It's discipline, funny. Discipline, laying in a couple things. Before we start the show, because remember, I used to be, I was over 200 pounds. So, I, you know, I was trying I've to. I've been trying to get over 200 Well, I was trying to figure out what I could do, you know, um, because the older you get, your metabolism slows down. So, yes. if you, But if your eating habits don't change, you pick up weight. Mm-hmm. So, um, <clears throat> I came with this thing called a thirty a, a thirty day journey. So you know, Nicole and your mom started, but they lasted like three days. So for thirty days, I exercised every day for thirty minutes a day. You know, um, I gave up pasta, bread, and chocolate for for those thirty days. Right. You know, um, and I did some other things. I made sure I prayed and different things had a spiritual part, a component to it. You know, and <clears throat> excuse me, I focused on different financial tips. So I was getting myself together physically, mentally, emotionally, spiritually, and financially. You know, so I lost it. So now I stay around 185. So I was getting close to 189. So your mom started to do her thing. So I was like, okay. So plus my goal was to kind of flatten this out a little bit. <laughs> so I said, okay. So I'm doing. I'm doing it with it. She looked. You see your mom. She looks great. Yeah. She, she's. Yes, you know. Yes, now yes, I'm trying to get her to stop. <laughs> no, but yo, you got to stop. But she does. So just you know. So I do it every once in a while. So now we just you know we do it, and then the weekends you know you kind of take a little. You know, a little treat ourselves a little bit as you should. Yeah, I should. feel like this and then Monday through Friday I do the same thing. But it sounds like Nutrigenics does all of that too. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I, you know, I did. We will not get it to the top. I got this. Yeah, but I think Doug Flutie. Yeah, we can get them guys, man. Yeah, but I, I think winking at your girl. But but it also it helps you. Um, you know, I think when you focus on all those areas, most of us we focus on one area. Mm-hmm. We do. It's one area. You know, I'm gonna study. I'm gonna make myself smarter. You know, meanwhile, we 360 pounds and not healthy, you know, or we in the gym. It. Yeah, we're on the gym working out and we're not mentally, we're not reading the books, we're not getting ourselves together. Or, you know, the older you get, you find yourself getting a little more emotional. You know, when you're younger, I think because you do such a great job of older and then, but as you get older, you find yourself getting, you know, you know angrier quicker. That's sad. Frustrated quicker. I'm going through <laughs> something. Yeah. Your tolerance yeah. level of certain things that you could kind of handle before, Definitely you know, it, it, it gets shorter. So mm-hmm. that's why you got to periodically check those boxes to make sure, you know, um, I'll be 62 this year. So I want to make sure that, you know, at, at 63, I'm still have, you know, I'm in decent shape because, mm-hmm. you know, I have a lot of people I know passed away, you know, um, your mom, John Wick, the black guy, on John Wick from behind the hotel. Uh, uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. He, he died. Brennan, right? he he's, yeah. he's, like, John Wick. Said, he's like 60 years old. Mm-hmm. Um, mm-hmm. Your mom just talked about a, fr- a, f- a friend of hers, mm-hmm. husband in the mid fifties, he passed away. You know, and you gotta remember, you know, we buried Lance Reddit. Yeah, we buried Dana a couple months. So I got people my age bracket, man, who just leaving him. Yeah. And I think he was only about sixty. Yeah, yeah he's sixty. Yeah. You know, and between people having heart attacks and, and all the different things, you know, so I, I focus on my health, man. I can't do like I used to do. Man. Yeah. So, I mean, at least so you take the time to do that. That makes me feel better to hear that too. I'm focused, man. So 
And it's funny because when I go into schools, you know, which is pretty cool, you know, um, they say, you know, they all try to guess my age, man. I say 30, 35, 40. 35? Yeah, 40. They stay no the <laughs> No, sorry, that's what they're, that's they're saying, especially without this. 35? Yeah, well, they, they, they do. What about the rest of your hair? Yeah, but most people don't have hair. Huh? Most people don't have hair. Most of my age got the blue you belly. Got, you got the nerd that have it braided. <laughs> they look at that, so they be like 35, 40. I get it all the time. So, wow, it's, it's 30, so I can say this. Your mom probably not watching this episode because one of the reasons why your mom started really pushing because we used to be some, we'd be places and people think that was my mom. I don't, mm. Who are you saying? <laughs> who are you? I'm not even like, <laughs> your son. So I don't know. I'm no just saying. Way. But anyway, we, <laughs> I'm sorry. I get the great support I get from my family. You know, I always talk about the great support. Because like, you know what? Because people be guessing that I'm like in my 30s, and then they saying you 35. Like, what's going on? What the tournament? We brothers. So mm-hmm. so anyway, and so our topic tonight is, you know, and I'm excited about this topic probably more so than any other topic we had. Um, because I've been spending so much time in schools, and I think this is one of the key things that's missing. Um, is it important that we study African American history, Black history, whatever you want to call it? You know, um, in schools, you know, is it important? Because you know, especially in the Southern states, it's a big move to get that stuff to erase all that stuff. You know, not even not even just African American history, but books written by Black authors. Yes. You know, they try. I mean, all that stuff they just trying to take or- out. You Not know, even that. it could just be about people of color because I've seen yeah. in Florida they're like getting rid of books from people, Hispanic yeah, like, culture, like, Asian. Like, is is it To Kill a Mockingbird? Is that the one they're trying to get rid of? Or? No, it wasn't that one. It was um some other books. It was a book specific I know about Jackie Robinson uh, that yeah. they were trying to get rid of. Like, well, I mean, but I think it does. They have actually as I don't we get into it, anymore. It, it does a couple things. I think the main thing I think that that it creates is. What you see now, we have a lot of Caucasian teachers who can't relate to African Americans because mm. they only know us as slaves, you know, in history, and they only know us as the crim- the criminal element. Mm-hmm. You know, um, that's why is I'm still amazed at the, the the remarks I get when people find that I do this show with you guys, you know, or I, I'm talking to a group of kids and the teachers in the room, and I'll mention that we go on a family vacation or something like that. People are still astonished by that, you know, and for us, that's the norm. You know, when we get together, we go out to dinner on a, on a you know consistent basis. So I think when you're not teaching about somebody's history, you allow, and I'm, I'm stealing this from your mom, she says all the time, you allow them to fill in their own blanks. So that becomes the issue. So now I'm creating my own narrative of what I think African-Americans are. You know, and I have certain biases that I'm not dealing with. So the first time I see somebody with braids or whatever, you know, different hairstyle, I go to the negative stuff I see. And I mean, I, yeah. I live that experience. Yeah. You know, yeah, I'm sure you do. Going yeah. to my college in which I have represented on my chest right now. Um, but like meeting and encountering people who have never yeah. seen anybody that looks like us. And like, uh, I remember in one of my classes, we had a project about racism and I tried to keep it lighthearted. You know, I like to joke. But what I did was I showed Family Guy and different cartoons or things that kind of fan the flames they, of racism. Right. They fan the flames of racism or stereotypes. And people laughing and joking. And then like at the end, I'm like, some of y'all never seen a black person before and think this is real. But and people actually like they took a second to think about it and was like, I do think that some of this is real. That's they laughing yeah. because yeah. they think that that's rooted in reality. But even there's black people. Who think stuff like that is rooted in you know they believe it too there's mm-hmm. black people who believe you know like i remember being in the classroom with somebody and we were talking <clears throat> and i began to share with the kids you know about how you know black people actually came to america before christopher Columbus did and that black black people were sailors and you know and somebody brought up the amistad and so my question was well how do you think they knew how to sail the ship if they weren't sailors you just don't you under you locked and up in the bottom of the boat. And you just don't take over the boat. Now all of a sudden you can read the charts and you can do yeah, the skies and all that stuff like that. And I remember <laughs> and I remember being with somebody and they laughed. And they laughed. And this person was somebody who I thought was very intelligent. They did not know that. Mm. You know. But you know what though? Like yeah. to this the conversation <clears throat> that we're having, right? It's like when you ask, should black history be taught in public schools? 
Of course, yes, it should, but there's a whole nother element inside to that too. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> the point that I like to make or think about is that when we talk about your oppressor and we talk about the yeah. man, why are we expecting that person to give you the full picture of the story? You know what I mean? Why do we not think that they're going to sell us short on our history and just tell you the parts that they think? Yeah, make them look good. Right. Like, but, or not even necessarily make them look good, but it's just like, that, to your point, that story I'm sorry, yeah. where they took the boat, they took yeah. the ship, they left out the part that before we even got captured that we were already selling ships. Well, you may be in the Google list, and I can't think of the name, but there was actually an island that, that when the slaves took over the ships, they would sail to this island. And the Brit British British could not defeat them to take the island back because while the British was getting down their squares and, you know, the lines and stuff, mm -hmm. they were hiding behind the trees and picking them off. <laughs> they were picking them off, you know, or they would wait until they came into the jungle and they, you know, into the to, to the bush of the island and picking them off, you know. So because people forget Shaka Zulu, you know, Africans were strategic warriors. You know, they, they had strategies. If you look at Hannibal, Hannibal, you know, was, was one of the greatest military minds. It was in the Caribbean. Was, yeah. Caribbean. But mm -hmm. Hannibal was one of the greatest, you know, one of the greatest military minds. They conquered, they conquered um, you know, Italy when nobody could. You know, he took money, he took elephants up through the Alps, you know, because you couldn't get into the front way. I mean, so there's a lot of African Americans in history who are very intelligent. Now, the problem with that is if I'm teaching you about these people in history, I can no longer paint you as coming from slaves. I can no, I can no, for lack of a better term, your pedigree now has risen because you realize that you are descendants of king and queens. Mm -hmm. And it changed the narrative because even when you hear people make excuses the way people act now and they want to use slavery as the note, you know, but okay, I get it. But that's just, that's just a portion of our history. That's not our history is not rooted in slavery. No, and, not at all. Yeah. So uh, mm. let's just go down the line real quick in, in terms of Black history. Like, Dad, I'm curious, how is that being taught? You know, when you Did were you first coming that? up in school, versus how Chris, you know, got it versus how I got it. I should have worn my hoodie. Somebody gave me a hoodie that said, um, "Black history is 365 days a year." You know, she was trying to get rid of black history. Not, up and make it yeah, whole year, but, which but is cool. so I'm I, leading to I'm leading to that because that. when I was in school, I went to a small school called Stokely School. There are people out here, you know, so, and we it was literally sixteen classrooms, which is unheard of now, and administrative offices. It was a real small school, but you know, we had we had black history every week for the whole year. It wasn't just it was highlighted in February, but that was purposely being taught to us. So you know. We were learning about, you know, Metzger and the shoe machine, not just Harry Tubman. You know, we learned the whole story of having Tubman, not just she free slaves. You know, you know how she strategically moved people along the underground railroad. You know, we, you know, we got into we. I learned about, you know, the, the, the dispute between W. E. Du Bois and George Washington Carver when modern intellectuals, well, you know, George Washington Carver was, you know, was an old Negro and he was kind of keeping slavery. That wasn't the issue. George Washington. W. Du Bois' point was that black, all black people need to go to college and get educated. What, w, what George Washington Carver was saying was, if I've been on a farm my entire life, how can I go to college and get educated now? So I can be the best farmer. I can own my own farm. I can produce my own crops. So his, his approach wasn't stay on the farm, stay on the plantation. By today's standard, it would have been be an entrepreneur. But people who don't know the history point to the arguments that they were having about <clears throat> this versus that because W. Du Bois, he left the country. I think it was, I forget where he went to France or, and he got educated, got a college degree, and you know, he was real smart and he was for the town of the 10th. So, do you think other schools were doing some of that too around your time? Like, where <clears throat> I don't they know. teaching black history all year round, yeah, or is that cool. just like where you were at? I think there were other schools doing it. My mother was a teacher at Hill School. They didn't do it as much as we did it because when you were in a smaller school back then and the school was actually a community, you know, we had, you know, we had white teachers, we had black teachers, we had black male teachers. You know, we had a, a strong contingent of teachers who, who who understood the importance of it and taught us. So it wasn't like today's teachers where you have some teachers who don't get the importance of it. So you get a five minute history lesson, you know, um, Benjamin Banneker. People talk about Benjamin Banneker, you know, he built, you know, he, you know, um, he contributed so much to this country, man. 
you know, and people don't pay attention to it. You know, the White House was built by a black man yeah. from memory because they did, they were stiffing the guy from France. You know, um, if you go on, the first person to die in the Revolutionary War was a black man, Christmas Adams. Mm-hmm. You know, which is ironic. You know, you die, you know, you die the first one to die, but you the first one they put in slavery when it was over. Of course. So it's kinda, <laughs> but it is. It's just kind of, that's a twist so, on it. So these are things that people don't know about us. And I see it in the way these kids act today. And is that something that you learned in school? Those things? Well, I mean, between school and, and like you, I had parents who make my mom. Yeah, that's what I'm my mom made like, sure. So in the summertime, we you know we we, we read sometimes. It was we didn't play all summer long. Because I know for us yeah. in school, I don't, Devin, I guess you could talk yeah. about this next. But I know for me in school, I felt like it was definitely you wait until February. Yeah. Yeah. I don't know if it was a sprinkle here and there throughout the year, but it was like <laughs> I like that sprinkle. <laughs> February is like that's when you get all your black history and don't talk about it any other time yeah. since. You get to pick a black person that you want to write this paper about. <laughs> and then it was like, all right, we're moving on to the next thing. Mm-hmm. Like and it was at a very, I think, a surface level. It's your Martin Luther King's. Um, like you said, uh, Malcolm X. Malcolm, I don't even know. They really touched on Malcolm X like that. Who oh, no. knew? He was yeah. controversial. But George, I George watch George Washington Carver and like, you know, like it's people that yeah. they felt like were safe enough for us to learn about. I think that's the approach that I felt like was relevant when I was in school and they were teaching black history. Do you feel like it was the same for you? I feel kind of like the same thing as you. I feel like uh, they only taught certain people and these specific people, you know, yeah, they were the ones marching. Jackie and Robinson. And like, you know, it was never those people who were really... I'm not saying that they weren't really do, but it's never those people that are really like that confrontation. A little bit militant. Well, yeah. yeah. Okay. Well, let's look. It's funny because you mentioned Jackie Robinson. What people don't know, Jackie Robinson was Colin Kaepernick. He had an issue with, with the way black people were treated when they were in the war, when they came back to the United States. They just teach you the baseball part. Yeah. yeah. They don't teach you. So that's the, it's the same thing when they when they taught us in school. Well, I learned more. Muhammad Ali, same but, yeah. Mm-hmm. They just teach you that Muhammad Ali was a rebel. He didn't mm-hmm. know. He stood for what he believed in. You know, and he was fight. He's like, yo, how are you going to send me over to fight for the same country that won't even serve me when I'm here? So, but people don't talk about. They just talk about the fact that he, he was the greatest Dodgers. boxer yeah. ever. Like they and he didn't lost even talk about the draft. How much of the career? Like, he, left. Yeah. he lost a good portion of his career because they wouldn't let him fight. So I think that's the point there that we're trying to make is that yeah. is uh, when we talk about our public schools teaching us and giving us no. this education, they're never going to give it to you fully no. or straight. So it's just, I mean, I think there's a, there's this dual side of this where it's like, yes, of course, I think public schools should be teaching that. Yeah. Um, I think maybe we need to break outside of this term or like idea of it just being, all right, Black History Month, that's when you get all the Black stuff. Because this it's history at this but, point, right? right? All, but, year but, but, all year round. All year round. It's it, integrated it's, within this, but the ironic how thing, this country was put together. The ironic thing about it is it is a part of American history because- mm-hmm. African Americans, black people, whatever you want to call them, contributed, you know, to, to everything, everything major in this country. So so Street I mean, lights. I get it why some Street people lights. wanna wanna separate it because you want to make sure, you know, African Americans get their props. You know, I get it. But you know, on the same token, they black you know, regardless. Like, well, what I know, but but the whole premise because people wanna I'm not saying they want it to be a month, but people wanna emphasize it because it is African American. Mm-hmm. You know, and, and they wanna make sure that, that people understand it. But I do agree if you teach it and you make it part of the, you know, part of the educational system, you make it part of the curriculum, it does stand out for itself. However, you do also risk. It's almost like <clears throat> teaching a slave to read. It's dangerous. Mm-hmm. You know, because once somebody learns to read, you I, you can no longer control how much they learn. Yeah. So it's the same thing. If you, can, if you teach somebody the history and they begin to understand from whence they came, um, Napoleon Hill said people don't know their history are doomed to repeat it. And that's what you see now. You see a lot of us who don't understand slavery, don't understand what we went through to get education, so they don't go to school. You know, they still doing the bidding, you know, mm-hmm. of, of of people who don't look like us because they don't know the history. Yeah. And like in my mind, how I'm <clears throat> thinking about it is like, you know, history should be taught in terms of just going down the, the timeline of events yeah. that have happened. And I think what happens when we do Black History Month. Yeah. Is they get to pick out the like all right, we're not gonna talk yeah. about this now. We're not gonna talk about this now. We say that for, for February, but then when we even get to February, we just talking about these specific <clears throat> things. And I think what also bothers yeah. me about it is like it's 
Black History Month is a little bit commercialized at this point. But you know, they, it just, it's, they, like, they, it's like a trend. Yeah, they just it do it to be like, all right, it's, like it's Black History Month. Is that about, same, we did it. It's, it's like, over. It's like Valentine's We did it and it's <clears> over. It's like Valentine's Day. Put it out there. But even when African Americans, we don't talk about it the rest of the year. We don't, we do, de- no. we don't demand. We don't demand our kids. We don't educate. You know, you're like me. You're rare because our parents, your parents, my parents, this, make sure you know that 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 um this was Bobby uh, that, that we learned it because it was valuable to me. So I wanted you to understand from whence you came. So people couldn't define you because when you don't know who you are, people constantly define you. Mm-hmm. They define you by calling you black, by calling you ugly, big nose, all the stereotypical stuff that comes to being African American, and you don't see that as being beautiful, especially if you say you came from slaves. This is all you know. And you've been ignorant, you know, or it's even look, and you know, and not to cut you off, but look at the power that the church has used to Christianity by making people think it's a white man's religion. Mm. And it's not. You know, I wonder how many people would show up at a church if they had the real color of Jesus, you know, which is an olive skin color right, up on the door, was, instead of a white guy with, with blue eyes. But that's how powerful that's the people mm-hmm. understand. That's the perfect example of how how powerful race can be. Because there's a white guy with blue eyes and blonde hair, everybody loves him, you know. But start talking about putting him up with that olive skin, you know, with hair like wool and feet like bronze. Last time I checked, bronze went white, mm. you know. And you don't have bronze feet bronze in white face, yeah. you know. <laughs> and, and, and if you look at it, if you look at the skin, <laughs> if you look at the skin pigmentation from where Jesus was from, and you look at the fact that they were able to hide him from Pharaoh and 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 you know not far from the king, you know, in a foreign land, which black people were from, you can't take a, a blonde hair, white hair, I mean, blonde hair, blue eye, white person, stick him in the middle of North Philadelphia and folk ain't going to know where he is. That's just not going to happen. So the fact that they were able to hide him also speaks to, to, to the color of his skin. And if you also look where, where um, an original map of Africa, the rivers in Genesis and the Bible are there. Mm-hmm. You know, and so what happened is, again, how powerful race is, Egypt is no longer Africa, it's Egypt now. All of a sudden, that's actually what I was about to say. Because they looked they just, at the like, pyramids and work. they said, "Yo, they, black people can't, you know, black people can't get credit for building them pyramids because they built the pyramids without cranes, with all this stuff. White people had not accomplished that yet. They had, they didn't have three story buildings, and those pyramids withstand the test of time. So what they did was in Egypt, and the Martians came down and built it. That was there very was the that was people were throwing around. Yeah. Yeah. But yeah. you got to think yeah. about they the, the, the Egyptians wasn't bought. They were they were embalming people. You know, they, yeah, they did. were they were they were embalming people, rapping people. You know, they they had Which, you know, yeah. Mhotep, medicine, you know, all that stuff was was developed. So I, I can't say you've contributed nothing to this country but slavery, and then turn around and say you contributed all this stuff. And if you go back and really study it, you look at all the, all the, the great, um, the Greek philosophers and all of them. You know, it's a reason why they didn't come on the scene until they were like in the um in their twenties. Because they didn't become smart until Alexander the Great went over and stole the stuff from Egypt. And he brought it back. So they begin to read this stuff. That's why you don't hear about, you don't become a genius when you're 25 years old. If you're a genius, you people are writing about you before that state. People don't understand that. They know that that you know it's a book called Stolen Treasures that talks about that. Yo, you where all this stuff, black people, you know, that they've taken credit for it. You know, we have the gas mask, you know, um, you know, black man. The stoplight. We see every day. Black man. You know, people say, oh, well, Alexander Graham Bell created the telephone. He created the phone, but I can't think of a black man created the, a transistor that made the phone work. So now who really created the phone? Because if I got a phone ain't working, it's a statue. It ain't a phone. It's a paperweight. <laughs> I'm hollering and nobody hearing me. <clears throat> but if you don't know your history, you buy what you're being sold. So what do you think the like, <clears throat> initial kind of separation or divide <clears throat> came from? Because like you said, you taught us uh, like, if you made sure we knew it, grandma and grandpa made sure you knew it. So, like, where was that divide for our people? Like, where does that come from? It comes from one, you have people who look like us, who so busy trying to assimilate, who, who tro- so busy trying to say that, you know, preaching is unity, which I'm preaching, don't get me wrong, that they think unity means forget your history. You know, that's they, so true. And, and, and they think, yeah, just like, get over I, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Like, and they and they because somebody says, "Oh, you creating separatism." I'm not creating separatism. I'm just. Do I say that when you celebrate President's Day? I don't think you create separatism. Ways, right? Yeah, you know. So, but you know, are they teaching the Boston <clears throat> yeah. Tea Party or like yeah. all this other yep. mm-hmm. Pearl Harbor? Yeah, yeah, yeah like uh, things yeah. that. So, so, but <laughs> and then the second thing is the thing about history that's quite interesting, and you look at American history, you know. 
it's a lot of bad stuff in this country. You don't want people to realize oh, mm-hmm. what they did to black people, what they did to Indians. There's a lot of stuff in American history that's not so American apple pie. Yeah. And so, and you're asking people in this generation now, the group of people who are calling the shots now, to be honest and take a hard look at themselves. And we, that's a show within itself. It's not going to happen because I can't, you know, I can't be smarter than you now. Do you think I this can't woke, push white supremacy. I can't push it. I'm better than you when your history is better than mine. You think this woke culture is a <clears throat> to, like our history being told appropriately? I think woke is, woke is often misinterpreted. And I think people who say they woke don't understand the definition of woke. It's definitely a change so over think, the years where it's like, yeah. you gotta feel good. Yeah. And, and I think... I gotta feel good. Yeah. And woke means... It, to me, woke means you're aware. To me, if you're woke, you're aware of what's going on. Not only are you aware, you're actively you're advocating for change in your own way. It doesn't be like everybody else. That's woke. You know, I mean, you sleepwalking with everything else. You walk around saying you woke because you got black hair. Cause you got the famous black hairstyle you woke because you got the t-shirt with all this stuff you. on it yeah but you're doing but you don't really know because you don't know your history you don't you don't really stand for anything you know so how does that mean you're woke dude and to that point of not standing <clears throat> for anything i think that's what <clears throat> happened with this woke yeah. culture is like uh yeah. people have made it very personal to them like you know where it's like oh, i'm going to be mm-hmm. woke about this and not this mm-hmm. But, but I think <laughs> we woke about LBGTQI plus rights, but not African American rights. I don't care but, about but that. that but see, much. that's the that's the that's the oldest trick in the book. That if you go back and look at if you go back and look at um American history, let's look at American history. You know, they've always had people in the group that they were trying to conquer or control that they went to first to buy in, that's to nice. justify. If you go back to slavery, you had the light skinned house Negroes versus the dark skin, you know, so they had they, they got the buy in. You know, if you go back, they had those Indians that they brought on to be scouts and all the great stuff, man. And, you know, so how good they are to us. You you know, mm-hmm. even though they treat you like crap, you know, hey, you know, so so if you look at history, it's been like that. It, I, I hate to use the word infiltrate, but it's been like that. They get a few, they infiltrate, get a few of us to buy it, to jump on board, and then you know, hey, see, we don't hate all y'all. Yeah, all of them not bad, you know, or the opposite. They pick out the worst ones and say, see, you know, they need us to take care of them. Mm-hmm. See, they can't think for themselves. And that was one of the things that Christianity did was, you know, and some white evangelists don't want to hear this. That's what they did. They convinced a lot of people who were who are prejudiced, who are racist, that black people needed to be taken care of. And again, if I keep you ignorant to history, you believe the narrative. You believe what's being passed down generation to generation. You know, you don't know because you you not you, you don't know your history. <clears throat> and I think what's important for us to know our history is there <clears throat> we kind of were having this. It needs to be more people of our community, like storytellers, um, people that like are that. willing to to share these stories. I think kind of yeah. in my mind, I'm like, man, documentaries are huge. Like there's so much information that people are putting out online, but, 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 but this, is it the right information a lot of times? But this is the problem. There's mm-hmm. people who know this stuff, but they're not saying but anything. But this is the problem. Not sharing. This is the problem. And we talked about it before we came on camera. Folk, they want to see controversy stuff, man. Yeah. They, they don't want to learn. And not that's to everybody. They don't see somebody get their head chopped off. They want to see people get mutilated. We got those you know? stories. But I'm just saying, <laughs> but that's what they want to see. They don't want to sit down. And it's just like when Roots came out. And Roots, y'all don't know if you ever saw Roots. I've seen I've Roots. Seen Roots. <clears throat> when Roots came out, you had some people who were riveted to the TV screen, who were riveted to that man. Yo, I, you know, because as a kid in school, we were. We, and we had to watch it, which is interesting because I had a Caucasian teacher. Yeah. We watched it. We talked about that's it. That's what I was about to think. I went to and a and school. Was, yeah, and I was in elementary school. We watched, watched it and we talked about it. We had discussions about it. <laughs> Why well, watch it live? Yeah. I watched it on, we watched it not live, but on TV mm-hmm. real time. When they when ran the series and it first mm-hmm. came on, I said, and it was a big deal. But you also had those black people who, who didn't want to talk about it. Why are you bringing that up? You know, and, and you know, so so you get those. So so if I'm doing it and I'm not teaching my kid, that kid's probably going to have a kid who don't teach their kid. And so now you, it just grows with each generation. And if I couple that with, like Chris said, people who do know are not passing it down, that's where that chasm comes from because it grows. Yeah. Because you got people who don't want to teach and you got people who just simply don't teach it. So with each generation, you know, you get more and more ignorant to, to, to what our history is. Yep. And I think uh, 
like a, a struggle or issue that we have today is that there's probably a, a good amount of people, too many people that just think that the past is the past, you know, and that like they, oh, that happened 400 years ago. Well, get over it. But like, you ever notice? That I'm, used to be I'm just, uh, I would say, our counterparts argument. But now you see people that look like us saying yeah. that. And it isn't but about if, getting over it. It's about you should know. Because like but history that's repeats itself, you're that's doomed ignorant. to repeat it. Because we don't, we're the only race of people you know, who say Jewish people don't forget the Holocaust. Never. You see, you see stuff all over the place about the Holocaust. You see, and rightfully so. You got exhibits downtown. You go to museums. It's in the history books. They teach it. They passed on generation to generation. Um, you won't be in Germany and see Jewish stuff up because Jewish people don't stand for it. You got black folk here talking about you shouldn't be taking down Confederate flags and Confederate because that's a part of history. Which is we the only one. But I'm saying we are the only ones who do that. Why? You know, if you want to talk about, you know, when they we were at war when they dropped the atomic bomb, we were at war, but we gave them, we, but we, you know, we gave them reparations. We we did so many things for them after we, you know, we, after we bombed, you know, we bombed Japan and Pearl Harbor. We, you know, and we were at war then. They weren't at war with us, African Americans. They just mistreated us. <laughs> we weren't at war with them. So so, but then you have people look like us who say, hey, you know, we got to let that go. You got to move on. We're the only ones saying that. You know, and that's what I think we we have to understand. Even if I move it to the church side and I, I go to the church side, you know, grace does not mean you forget. Grace means you forgive. And I think mean, people don't understand that. Grace does not mean you forget. You, you forget it. You don't dwell on it, but you forgive. I'm not going to forget somebody that punched me upside my head 15. I can forgive him, but I'm not going to keep walking past you after you punch me 15 times yeah. in my I head. Mean, and I just feel like knowing <clears throat> the past and your history. <clears throat> Is like yeah. the roadmap for how you move forward accordingly. But you okay? But let's look at that. And, and how many people you know that's trying to move forward? How many people you know? And this is their response is I'm just living day by day. And I don't even want to say accordingly because people might think. But that's I'm just like saying, I'm, li but I'm mind, living day by day. But like forging your path. But people don't talk like that. People I hear so many people talking about I'm living day by day. You know I'm just getting by. You know, um, you know, my favorite joke is you've been on the same job 20 years complaining how you hate your job, but you never look for another job. You know, <laughs> mediocrity is what was what is the is the acceptable thing now. So mm -hmm. if I settle for mediocrity, you know, why am I going to search for a history that's going to tell me I can be better? Okay. Why? Because now it forces me to think about, yo, I can do better. I can do more. I can be better. So they've already like mm -hmm. began to yeah. take some of these things out of the school. Like, what do you yeah potentially like predict some issues could be like from this lack of our history being told. Well, I think it's going to be, <clears throat> you see some and of I those, hear yeah. from too, one, it feeds to systemic racism. It, it kind of, it feeds that, you know, because, you know, um, you have people who don't look like us Caucasians who, who don't understand that. So they, they're, they're living in lava now. They live in the folks they see being locked up, the folks on welfare, you know, the folk out here doing all the crazy stuff, the rappers with the girl. That is forging their history. So that's what's being passed down to their kids. Mm. And some of the adults, you see, that was passed down to them because they don't know the history. So on that side of fence, that's, that's how you fan the flames of racism. That's how you fan, fan the flames of superiority. You know, because you hear this all the time. Oh, I'm an immigrant. I came to this country and I made something of myself. Yeah, you came to this country. We weren't. We didn't come to this country. We were brought. We didn't. They didn't, they didn't give us. They didn't give us grants and land and all this stuff and say, "Yo, go make something with yourself." No, we you were. Had, you see that you know, over there? Go you know, get them. They <laughs> took us. They took us and made something of themselves. So, so that, over be on your way. Yeah, but they don't. But see, they don't get that aspect of it. No, they don't. They don't get that aspect of it. So I think. That, that's the first part. The second part is, you know, and I said, if you don't know your history, you're doomed to repeat it. So, in other words, we have people now with a slave mentality. They're free, but they're in prison because their brains tell them, I can never be. Everybody that's successful is the exception to the rule. Mm. Everybody is, doing, is an exception to, or you sold out. That's actually a good point. You too, sold out. Like, it, it's always an excuse. Yeah, it's always an excuse. Like, oh, it's, always an excuse. Yeah, it, it's always an excuse. It's never, you know, they worked hard. And never, it never worked. They they did what they needed to do. But they said it they about never, any other race. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, oh, but see, yeah, but see, but see again, good. that's the slave he mentality. Works hard. But that's the slave mentality. It's like, for instance, if you go, you know, um, if you or I we're, we're arrogant, mm -hmm. you know, but if you don't look like us, you're confident. You know, we're crazy. They're centric. Mm 
So there's terms that we use every day, man, that, we that labels apply, that yeah. label us that we buy into because we repeat the narrative. We repeat the narrative and, or, or we think because I grew up in a certain neighborhood, even though I look like you, talk like you, act like you, I'm better than you. No. It's like when I meet people now and, and they have these little comments about the inner city. That's me. You can't separate because that's, you know, that contributes to who I am today. Mm -hmm. And that's still in me. You know, like we were laughing because I, I told your mom this morning, you know, I, I start, I, you know, I'm in a circle with seventh graders, seventh graders and doing a circle with seventh graders, it's like eight of them, maybe eight to ten. So I get to introduce myself and it's, I hear this kid behind me say, yo, we can take him. What? So, so I turn around. <laughs> yeah. So, so I turn around and look at him. So he, they must have saw a look on my face. So I said, son, you have no idea who you're talking to. Take who? I said, you have no idea who you're talking to. So I didn't say this a lot to myself. I'm saying, and you're gonna be the first one that's gonna get dropped. <laughs> <laughs> Looking at that one kid. But 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 my man, but his mentality is yo, because you think I'm from the suburbs, I'm soft. Yes. Yo, we can take him, man. Yo, he you know he from the suburbs. He ain't from you know he from. First of all, you from Norristown, so you ain't really from the hood. Don't don't. I don't even get into that conversation. <laughs> you know, dude, you live in and I'm not not I'm not disrespecting Norristown, <laughs> but, but I'm just saying no. But I'm just saying you have some issues, but you not. You it's in like you come back to Norristown. It's like when I hear people say, you know, man, I'm from the tough part of Montgomery County. Give me a break. There's tough parts <laughs> everywhere. But I'm like, yo, you ain't in the tough part. You live in the same, but you live in a single home. You live in a twin home. You not you you in a you may be in tough compared to what you think, but tough is when you live in a neighborhood and you whatever they cook, you smell. When they got a party, you got a party. Hmm. You know, tough is yo, when you you know, gunshots are like the alarm clock. You don't want to get dark pop or pop. I gotta go back to the porch. So I'm not knocking off somebody living, but yeah. it's like when somebody tells me, Oh, I got this kid in my class and he bad, and you out here and shouting him, he bad because he talked too much. No, get some of them kids in the city it's, that's throwing dust. But life yeah. is perspective, and, and, and it just I agree. Shows I that, agree. Uh, people don't really understand that, but it goes to what we're talking about beyond that. It goes to what we're talking about because we, even in our race, we'll look at somebody and don't care about the history. You look at somebody and we think your now is your history. You've always been like that. You must have all you 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 had it good. You know, no, I didn't have it good. I, I remember just, being broke. I was thinking like, yeah, I've been. I probably fell up. Well, <laughs> yeah, I, I got a prediction. I got a prediction for y'all. <laughs> I, I didn't mean you to say that. Well, I, I definitely have a prediction uh, for y'all to get back to your question. I'm going to say in like 15, 20 years, they're going to try to push that slavery was, you know. A conspiracy theory. They're already saying it. They're already so, saying it. to that point, they're already like it, they're already. It didn't really. It didn't really happen. So listen, yeah. this or is my thing. That bad as you know, they claim it would be. So this is the thing that we again the topic of like uh, should this be taught in the public schools? It needs to be taught in a lot more places other than it needs to be taught at home because the public yeah. schools they're changing mm -hmm. the narrative. But you're making it. But they but were you can't teach what you don't they know. They were servants. But you can't. And, and this goes back to what I'm saying. And this is one thing that I'm really learning as, as I do this thing, this restorative circles. I'm with you. Know, it's on you, us. What a restorative what circle is. You you know is is three phases. Real quick. One, you give it as a part for kids to win their way back into school. Because we, we have a punitive system, but we have nothing in place for kids to win their way back in school. You know, so it's sort of circle. They get there. You know, the person who, you know, who committed the offense is there. The person who. who they the sent them up for prison. Why do so, you want so, them to come back to so, school? So you have those talks, those conversations. You kind of work through why they did it, you know, how people feel. You kind of go through the thing. And then the second part of it is to build relationships. You want kids to understand that school is a community. And you need to take pride in your community. And in the community, you have difficulties and challenges, but you're not in this. You know, because, that you know, and then the third thing is, you know, which is the piece I added is to help teachers understand the culture that they're working in. Because you have too many teachers mm -hmm. who don't understand the culture. Um, they think because dude is working is, is child, you know, is child abuse. He's working because he's the rare one in his house. You know, dude stand up watching his kids and, and he's not old enough. I get it. But he's doing it because mom can't afford a babysitter. So it's just so part of this getting them to understand the culture. And I say it because history helps you understand the culture. Yeah. And and that's that takes full circle because I can't be superior to you, Devin. If you come from kings and queens and I come from far, I come from some, you know, farming country or whatever, I, I'm no longer superior to you. That's a problem. It, it's why when people look at us, they have a problem. You know, because you got black sons and you ain't been to jail, you ain't pulling, you know, we can have intelligent conversations. That's why people are enamored on this show because they're not used to seeing it. That's this should be the norm. 
And but the reason why it's not war, it is more of a norm than is than is um, perpetuated because America, people don't look at us, look like us, has perpetuated this this myth that this doesn't supposed to happen. Now I don't. Chris is going to go off. I don't want to get too engaged in this, but one of the things they did to kind of dilute history was this whole gender war thing. That's because we're so busy fighting about that. about mm-hmm. male, female, stronger, Bad stronger months. that our history is gone. We we're not talking about Shaka Zulu, the kings and stuff they did, and they were great queens, you know. Um, black. That's why Black Panther did so well. That was American was, history, and people thought that, but that's Africa. It's strategic. Africa has all those. Oh, it's yeah. I was talking to people that they really thought Wakanda was a real place, and you know, <laughs> but I heard Kanye West looking at him like, but Kanye I mean, West made this point where he was saying how. Like uh, it's like it seems very strategic in terms of what they're doing, you know, making us forget about our history. It is. When you type in Black Panther now, you're not going to see Red the Hand. Black Panthers like yeah. red handed. Yeah. Like, you're going to see on purpose. You going to see Black Panther Wakanda. Oh, yeah, yeah. <laughs> it is on purpose because <laughs> the problem with that is is even, okay. That's a perfect example. And now wait two years later. They Let's go like, back. You're a real them. Black Panther. But that's that's the perfect example of what you're talking about. This is the, this is the second tier of the Black Panther, the, the Black Panther Party. They gave out food. Mm-hmm. They taught. They took care of the poor. They preached unity. They policed their own neighborhoods. They did people, respond. Like, they did respond to priest brutality, mm-hmm. which which that's neither here nor there. But you don't hear all this stuff. All you hear with their militant group. That's all you hear. You don't hear all the stuff they after school programs and stuff they doing before everybody else was doing it. They were doing this. You know, they were teaching a group of people to be proud in your blackness. Yeah. And then you can even see yeah. if you look at <clears throat> history that it was they were targeted. But if you go to okay, look at the Super Bowl, we go back when Beyonce did the whole thing in the Super Bowl with the Bush and the picks and everything. People made a big deal out of that. And now tell me why. They made a huge deal. Of that, and I'm thinking to myself, like, yo, you know, because they only knew the other part of the black. Exactly. Mm-hmm. Because that's what the, that's the narrative that was painted. Now, look at it this way. How many people stood up and said, OK, this is the truth about the black man? No, not too many. But then I think part of it, too, is you hear it's, it's sometimes a silencing of the truth. Oh, the, like, yeah. But but I think it's because I heard that Malcolm X was killed. Like and the government knew about it. They made it had a hand. In. Well, it's funny you should say that because like, they just released. They on? just the guy that he had locked up for all these years. He just released because DNA proved he didn't do it. Didn't do it. But if you go back to Martin Luther King, the CIA was 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 monitoring him. Right. Like so. And that's who was putting. I, let's let's look at Martin Luther King as a perfect example. They put out there that he was having these extramarital affairs. Whether he did or not, there's still black people today. We had to come about the comedian yeah. who bring it up today. Forget everything else he did. That's what they bring up because the whole gender women specific. You know, they look at the history, yet. but that's what I'm saying. But that's what they bring up. Yeah. And you don't understand the thing about comedians. They have more power than you think because they get the message out there in jazz, right. but people mm-hmm. remember that. And it was so disrespectful, yeah. like to just bring yeah. up that point of her saying the that. Way and it, but it was yeah. a, it was, it was kind of telling of how we view our history. But she was taught that, she, right? She was like dying. you yep. legit <clears throat> felt comfortable yep. saying yeah. that on the airways, disrespecting everything that he yeah. did. Knowing that what he did gave you the mm. opportunity that you have right now, yeah. maybe you don't know that. Maybe you take that for granted. His daughter's still alive, right? You know and and like, you disrespected yeah. his family, like all these but, things. But my that, thing is, know the whole truth before you make. See, I think you want to be mad because I think what he did. People, with his, think, his wife stayed. People, think <laughs> you get a platform, but you don't even know. You know what you were told. You don't even know. We, we were shared that nobody outside that circle knows if it was factual. Mm-hmm. You know, I'm not saying it was not. But but you but then it's, and I, I you know I did I did a video on this the other day, and my video was about this. See, people kill me with that because we want grace and mercy. We want people to forgive us. We want people to forget. We, she plagiarized the book. Yeah, talk but, about but, it. We, <laughs> but we don't get. Yeah, but we don't we don't extend don't it to share. people. Don't you know, share. Don't share. And you don't take. You can't take away somebody's positive attributes or contributions because they did something wrong. Because if you if you cured cancer and you went and robbed the bank, those people who you cured in cancer. I don't care about the bank. the bank. I mean, is it? Is I get it. You, 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 you should be judged. You should be judged fairly. But but we we have certain people. But this goes to show you, and it's black people who always lead the charge. And that's yes. the part that bothers always me so much. It's like yep, uh, we when we're talking about, again our yeah. history here. Mm-hmm. So quick to put us down. Why mm-hmm. are we not uplifting our voices and these stories? And like. Uh, Again, but to our topic, people. relying upon these people in the public schools to give us because I don't like, like we sitting there waiting to be fed the truth because I don't, they're not going to give it to you. I, I and this is what I say when I hear people repeat stuff that's not true, 
and they repeat it, you know, matter of factly. In my mind, I always say they value white people over black people mm. because a white person told them this in this news, mm. and a black person could be telling you the truth and you refuse to believe. It. But you know, and it's you kind of to, to go with that. It's almost, I mean, <clears throat> it's almost human nature in a way for other people. It's like this self preservation. Okay, I, they want to. They want themselves to. They, yeah, we can tell y'all a little bit what, but we're not gonna go that far into you, it. You, you, you know who Nat Turner is, right? Yeah, and you remember, you remember I used to wear the shirt. Mom said, "Hey, when I wore the shirt mm-hmm. with the Bible on the because they thought she was about to be out <clears> with that." But, 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 he, but he's the perfect example. Of what happens when you begin to get educated? When you begin to understand the full truth? Because they taught him how to read certain passages in the Bible, because those Bibles, you know, um, in their mind, kept they them. reinforce mm-hmm. slavery. They reinforce submit to your master. Slaves should do this. Slaves should do that. The problem when it was when he got educated, which most of us don't do, he began to read the entire Bible for himself. Mm-hmm. See, the problem with most of us, we still got that slave mentality. We just take, you said it, I'm taking what they gave me because this is what they want me to believe. And I don't have a wherewithal to dig for myself mm-hmm. and say, look, hey. So I think that's part of the problem, man. We got to have the courage. To, to look for the truth. And it takes courage to seek the truth because sometimes, you know, when you, and I said this to some of my staff today because some stuff happened and they were struggling with it, you know, you know, sometimes the truth is going to hurt, literally hurt people. Mm-hmm. But it's still your obligation, you know, to tell the truth. You can do it in such a way where it's not purposefully hurting people. But, you know, sometimes, you know, it's like when you, somebody you love doing something really, really stupid. And you don't want to say it to them because you know it's going to hurt their feelings, but you got to tell them. Mm-hmm. You know, and it's the same thing with our history. So we don't, we don't, we, we kind of shy away from it because it takes courage to say, you know, this is what, like, I don't have a problem saying what I say. You know, I don't, because I think if you don't know who you are, you're always going to be defined by somebody else. That's just a fact of life. That's why people got blonde hair today, brunette tomorrow, blue eyes one day, hazel eyes the next day, because they're trying to please somebody else. They're going through this whole thing. You need to lose five pounds, you gain five pounds. You need to cut your hair, you need to grow your hair. You know, we, Holly Berry is the flavor of the month. Then everybody get there like Holly, mm-hmm. you know. So because because I don't know who I am, but when you know who you are, you know, you don't get into what everybody. You know, I think one of the things that helped me become pretty good at what I do is because I don't care what you know, yo, know, I don't care what everybody thinks. You know, when the first person told me that's not a job, <laughs> you know, you're never gonna make any money doing that. You know, when I was hearing that stuff, yo, know, I, I, it to me is I call it noise. It was noise. And it's the same thing about history. I remember teaching y'all about history, and some of my friends tease me. You know, they ain't doing Harriet Tubman. They ain't doing Benjamin Banner. Everybody do Harriet Tubman, Benjamin Banner. I want my kids to learn something different. You know, if I don't stretch you, who's going to stretch you? You know, if, if cool, I don't I prepare you for the world, teach you your history, I can't relearn. You know, on the school. And I remember when we first moved out here, I remember having this conversation at Cedar Brook in your class, Chris, when they were up there talking about all the how to, we have this diverse reading material and it represents all of the, uh, you know, all of the uh, 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 races we have out here and we're so proud of. And I'm like, yo, I don't see no black books. They didn't have, <laughs> yo, I, didn't, I didn't hear any black authors. So how are you going to tell me? you looking at me in this class. Obviously, my kids look like me. I'm not the only one. But you say you have a diverse that meets all the needs, but you got books that represent Asian Jews. So that's the problem. And I'm the only one I who was raised in my hand. I English at first. I but, got out of there. But I'm, <laughs> I'm the only one that raised my hand. Everybody was going to sit there and be content with it. I can give you more, more things that we just let stuff go, man, and where other people push it. You know, I want my kid to learn our history. Yeah, I'm teaching them at home, but this needs to be a part of your curriculum. Mm-hmm. You know, you know, um, you know, we we you had Jewish holidays, rightfully so. Well, they had off. Well, where's my holiday? I got off. You know what's actually so funny? This saying, conversation yeah. they were having because uh, I was watching Fresh Prince Bel Air, the new one. Uh, yeah. and there was an episode. Well, I mean, kind of this season is going along these lines of like where the there was a black teacher. She got fired because she was giving a black student like books on our history and like. This other little white girl, I don't know why, but she started snitching and telling and got the teacher fired because she was giving this book. Well, you know students. why? Because you empowered. But like it was it's very in line with, I think, what we're talking about in regards to like uh, just the school. They kept saying, like, oh, yeah, we'll get to it. Like, we'll make this diverse. Well, well let's go back to the first Prince. In, in the first round, we were in Boston. Y'all, we kind of right. binge watching <laughs> when Carlton is dancing to the rap music. And, then, and, and the people say, and, and they get in his face, and they saying it to him in his face, and he and this singing and dancing with him and everything. And and Will had to break it down to him. Yo, you need to understand your history, what that means. 
and, and I had this conversation all the time where where people tell me, you know, um, I had a conversation recently with somebody and I got a lot of respect for them. I, I disagree because they said, what's the difference between nigga and nigga? Yo, when, when somebody hears that, how, I say, how do you know how I mean that when I say it to you? Right. Yeah. You don't know. And we, and, you know, and, guarantee and, and he's not saying it to his white homie. Yeah, <laughs> you know, and so, I, you know, and, and we, but we do stuff like that. You ain't gonna walk up to somebody and say cracker because ain't no way you can say it's a good thing. Or honky. We yeah, yeah. I heard they moved, they removed that off TV. Like but I'm but I'm just saying though, but then because Kanye West comes out and say, Well, we redefine a term. You can't redefine a negative term that's been here throughout history. You can't. Unless you're gonna erase everybody's minds. And, and and this thing about the word was the word was given to us to describe us as being ignorant. It wasn't a compliment. It was not, so you can't take a word that says y'all are ignorant group of people. What's funny and then is turn like, around saying now it's a positive even thing. Even now when we use it, we be yeah. calling people ignorant. You know what I mean? Like, oh my god, look yeah. At but, 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 I'm, <laughs> but, but that was, the term was meant to demean us. It was meant to. It was we, meant to describe we us in negative though, light. Too. That's I'm not exactly knocking it, funny. but that's part of what we pass on. Is what I'm saying. And when I hear people try to defend it, yeah, no, you shouldn't be using it <laughs> because to me. To me, and you know, and, and and probably get flack for this. I'm embarrassed when I see people that look like us acting crazy and stupid. I'm embarrassed, man, because you no, know why no, I'm embarrassed? Sure. Because I'm saying to myself, oh my, they think that's us. Yeah. Yeah, they really they, do. They think that's us. They think so, therefore, they looking at me just waiting for me now. You know, so I, think- I, I did it. Let me, I want, and, and, and I give you another example. I, I, did, I recently did something in. Uh, we sort of circling the score. Somebody's probably watching this. Who cares? Because it's the truth. <laughs> I do, no, I and because it's, it's been burning in me. I mean, I talked about it with your mom, and and you know, um, I did something in the school. We sort of circling the school, and um, it's a group of teachers in there. So me and this, you know, me and this one teacher were having a discussion. And the rules of the circle is you only can speak when you have a mic, but you can say pass. You don't have to answer the question. So I said, okay, red means bad day, yellow means average day, green means good day. So she was on red. Why are you on red? Pass. Go back around, temperature check, why red, why you on red pass? Go back around it's again. Crazy. So now she tells me why she's on um red. And she begins to talk about different things in the school. So I'm having a dialogue with her, like I do with it, just probing. Well, is it something you can do? Because that's the purpose of it to help people come up with their own answer. Mm-hmm. Is it something you can do that can change the situation? You know, do you understand when you're angry at somebody else, it hurts you, not the other person? Do you understand when you walk into a classroom, your kids understand that you're angry? That's why you're getting this back from them, because this is the most relational generation I've ever seen. This is not the generation that says, I'm going to respect you just because you had this title. Mm-hmm. You come with these guys sideways, they write back at you. I'm not saying it's right, but you understand the population. So afterwards, so by the end of the thing, she's on yellow now. So I'm, hey, I did my job. You know, I'm on red, I'm on green. She's cool. Here comes this little black teacher. Are you a counselor? And it's always black people that's crushing your credentials. It's always us that got to know the credentials. So I said, you know, and you know, I got a master's, but that's, I'm not sharing this with you in human services. I said, why? Who wants to know? Well, because me and, me and 15 other teachers, you know, we watched this and we thought you were bullying her. So I said, well, let me ask you a question. Why was I bullying her? I said, well, before you answer, you know, I've been doing this in a lot of different schools, teachers in the room. No one has ever come to me and said that, I bullied, bullied. that I bullied anybody. So, I I know, this? Yeah, yeah. So, so first in my mind, I'm thinking, you don't understand. You're here because you were the black person in the room and the white teachers didn't want to talk to me. So they said you. That's the first thing they sent. You don't even know that's why they sent you to talk to me. They Mrs. sent you because I'm not talking to right. you. You know why? Because I don't want to. I'm not talking to the black man. Because I'm not gonna have I'm not gonna talk to the black. That's actually probably exactly yeah, so, what so, so she doesn't even understand. I knew when I, I knew when the stuff she was saying, because you know how somebody say something to you and you can really tell those they don't their know words. It. Yeah, and they, they can't really back it up because she's so I said, okay. I said, Well, tell me how I was born. Well, you just wouldn't let it go. I said, but remember what I said, she could have said pass many times. So she chose to be a part of that conversation. Mm-hmm. And I said, I never told her what to think. I said, I just gave her solutions. I said, if I'm talking to a kid and the kid is on red. I do the same thing. I probe why you're on red. How can I get you, you know, and I do it. And most of the time it works. There's times when it don't. And there's times when it works and the kid won't tell me because they're laughing. I know you're on yellow or green because you're laughing now. But she, you know, and, you know, and as a conversation, I said, well, let me ask you a question. If she went from red to yellow, do you think that happens if I was bullying her? That's actually what yeah. I was thinking. So I said, like, you I, get bullied so and said, feel better my, about and it. This is my <laughs> other question. There were nine other teachers in the room. They all got up and shook my hand and told me what a great class it was. So, so don't you think they would have felt I was bullying her? Yeah. Mm-hmm. 
So my point is, but they sent her because I know what it was. You can go talk to the black man. <laughs> you know, because, and then somebody shared this afterwards, and I agree. They said, you know what? You got to remember, there's still a portion of America that they don't, they don't want no black person in power. You're not teaching them. You're not teaching them. You're not going to be over them. You know, and think about it. That's why you have certain people get upset when they have certain people over top of them. So that's another how we take and we perpetuate the stereotype and we become they certain. I'm thinking to myself like, yo, you know, you, first of all, you really got no, you know, your boss bought me in. So you really ain't got no right to be talking to me. So I said, okay, I'll tell you what. So I said, well, so I said, so, so I put the Jesus, I put the Jesus move on her. I hit them with the Jesus move on her because there's a script, you know, the, their Pharisees, no, the Pharisees are, the Pharisees are accused, the Pharisees are accusing this girl. They accuse this lady of adultery. So they, 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 they accuse this lady of adultery. So Jesus says, let's who among you cast the first stones. So they all started walking away without sin. Who among you was sin? Start walking away. You know, so at the end he says, Well, where are your accusers? So I said to her, Where's the 15 people at? Well, what do you mean? Because I want to let me address them. Let them add, let them come to me and ask me questions. I have a conversation with them. So so what I'm making is but she didn't even realize, man, until they were using her to come in here and I could tell them more we talk. She didn't really have anything legitimate to say. But somebody felt like they were gonna send her to come talk to me. Yeah. Now they all stomped out the room. They're angry, but you're standing here. What's wrong with this guy? I didn't. I can't say it. But the, why are you standing here? If they're angry. Yeah. I mean, to that point, I think mm. that that's where we just need to be better at unifying. Yeah. Stick together. Yeah. Like stick together. That's why we we see it happening in schools now, where they're taking away Black history because we be the first ones to come at each other's throat. You know, like I don't like how you're doing that. I don't like how you did that. But it's like so many other things that well, are look. larger than that, that we should be able to come in and be like, you know what? Like, all right, I <clears> might not <throat> like how you're doing that, but what you're doing is yielding results and helping us. Like at the end, of, I think that's what gets lost in all of this is that um, we don't think about things in the context of us. You know, like it's very personal and like very individualized, right? So it's never <clears throat> like, man, but this but, is going to be beneficial to the broader group. But, uh, like, but it's uh, like, man, how does this impact me? But that's the slave mentality. I'm pitting you against each other. Right. That's that whole crap in the bro. Yo, Chris, man, you letting Devin get ahead of you, man? He ain't no better than you. Mm. Yo, yo, your sons are doing better than you. You know, you don't have a problem with that. Your wife makes more money than you. It's the same with that concept is used because how you control somebody is you cause conflict. Because if I got you fighting, you ain't worried about me. You ain't paying I mean, no attention to me. How you control somebody is you erase their history too. Yeah, so but, just, but, like, but, you see? but this is the thing you gotta understand. We don't know if, who we really if, are. If, if I keep you ignorant, I keep you poor. If I keep you ignorant and I keep you poor, I keep you under my control. You're only going to go as far as I allow you to go because I'm going to give you limited resources to keep you in both those categories. I'm not going to invest in your schools. I'm not going to help you get educated. I'm not going to give you a job that's going to pay you enough money to get your own education. Mm -hmm. That cycle is still working in America today. We just don't know. Yeah. I mean, I think us having this show, for one, yeah. hopefully <clears throat> helps. Yeah provide some insight in that message as you can see i can talk about this before. right i think no i think something <clears throat> else that we need to start doing i feel like i said this before yeah. but like you know i've been in and out but like we are responsible for sharing our stories like we have to be able to tell people about our history yeah, and black fact. right and not just <laughs> the 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 harriet tubman's or the Washington George Washington Carver, and the Malcolm. I mean, Malcolm yeah, Michael Max, you probably do need to hear that a little bit more. But, but, I but think I, I, we I, need to not, be responsible to for you. digging even deeper but, but into our history. Let's look at and Malcolm. why it's important. And not to cut you, I know we go to we're gonna go a little bit here. This is very important. It's important. Let's look at Malcolm X. You have Christians who are angry at Malcolm X, you know, because he was a Muslim. Yo, he, he you know, people forget the fact that when he went to Mecca, he came back with the truth about it wasn't white versus black. And they killed him for it. The thing about Malcolm X that I like, he was willing to die for what he believed. Mm -hmm. And he, him and Martin Luther King were starting to get, which was dangerous. Get we're along, starting right? to get on one accord. So, mm -hmm. But that's people, people don't know. But, but I feed you the narrative. You're Muslim. You can't be into. So, so now I'm fighting him. And while I'm fighting him, back then, white people were still hanging people. It's like, what's the, what's the they were, picture? Yeah, they were still. No, but that's, the the history, but that's what this country has been able to do very well. Yeah. 
and they, yeah. and it still it still applies today because you know hey you live in North Philly you live in South Philly you live in West Philly you live in North Philly and, and we, you're on the East yeah, Coast we, you're on the West yeah, Coast we we continue <laughs> to feed the narrative today meanwhile there and, and the other part you got to look at it is you know, the population of African Americans are growing just like North slavery. But if I can control the money, if I control the finances, I can still keep control of the races. No matter how many y'all come, if I still control the economics, I still got y'all. Mm-hmm. This might be a little bit off topic, but something I saw about the economics is that Jewish community, they put their money into their community. If yeah. you're going to go get his clothes cleaned, he's going to a Jewish laundromat. Yeah. And that Jewish laundromat is going to go to a Jewish bank and so on and so on. Yeah. But then for us, they say our money stays here. Six minutes, all the six minutes, <laughs> like, and then we're not even spending it with us. We're and spending I, this going. I up. feel like at least, well, at least for our family, I feel like we're you no know, trending towards that direction where that money is going back into our community. You know, a little bit at a time. Well, I've been purposeful. I've been purposeful for for you know. Um, I buy my oils from some a young lady who works for me, so I, that's where I buy my oils from. You know, um, I dabble in some other stuff, but I buy my oils mm-hmm. on moisturizer from her. Um, I just bought. I, I'm not even eating chocolate. I just spent sixty bucks for a box of candy for somebody because I'm supporting somebody in the school. He was like, I got a whole, I got a whole box of candy sitting up to your mom. He's like, black well, chocolates. Yeah, your mom was like, why you buy that? Your mom was like, so I mean, so I'm just saying. So I, that's one of the things I've been more purposeful about this year, you know. Um, and I think we all need to do it. Yeah, you know, I'm more purposeful about you know where we all go. This might catch where, you know, my face. Where, <laughs> where, where we where we go to get our where we go. No, I'm just saying where, only black. where we go to get our. Hair <laughs> You know, sure. I, I'm more, the, you know, the barbershop, I'm more purposeful about that, you know, and sometimes it means I suffer a little bit because service is not always what it needs to be. Like when we went to brunch that time. However, I'm still I'm, I'm still in that mindset because we need to do better. We need to make sure that we're contributing resources, you know, to, to those who, who create jobs in our community, those who help educate people in our community, you know, those who support people in our community. Yeah. You know, we can't say, you know, um, like this, the so-called American dream. You know, um, it's more of a nightmare for more people than it is a dream. Sure. And, and the thing about it is the, the power. We have the power. African-Americans spend more money than any other ethnic group in this country. Yes, they they are made. So it's so it's no, if we all, I say this all the time, if we all decided we weren't going to buy Nikes for a month, just like we're Colin Kaepernick and people were trying to get him to boycott that, they was like, nah, we know who buys sneakers. Things would change. If we said we weren't going to church as chicken or Chick-fil-A or something, you know, for a month of Sundays, yo, things would change. If we said we're not going to go to Walmart or Target or something for a month, things would change. We could have had some sneakers with Big Baller brand, but he was just trying to park everybody out. Yeah. But I'm just 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 saying, but no, but (laughs) but what I'm saying is things would change, but they don't change because we're not educated enough to understand that. Like, there's no reason. When I have people complain about the schools, but you don't go to one school board meeting. You know, yeah, I'm sitting. In, I'm sitting the SRC meeting. They're talking about closing the school because the school hasn't hasn't lived up to par and has been underperforming for ten years. And somebody stands up and says, "Well, well, where my daughter gonna go on the prom at?" You know, you got to be kidding me. Mm-hmm. You, my that's your concern. Or school now my now my now my kids these kids can't yeah, read. Now my kid, <laughs> yeah, now my kid got to take two school buses to get to school. But you rather not had to take two buses, but be uneducated. We got to get our priorities together at yes. the end of the day. Like that's. But you got to value education, Kristen. That's a whole nother that's thing. A whole nother we don't thing teach too. our kids to value education. I, like, and my that's last how they're taking us to I got a, schools. We I don't got, value education. I got a class in one school that I had to talk to the other day. Mm-hmm. And, and the whole, I think probably 90% of the class is only Spanish speaking, which was different for me because I'm doing this and I got an interpreter. So I got to speak slow. I gotta <laughs> what, and I don't know how this is translating, so I got to be careful. you know. And they were telling me the stories about how, you know, um, we were talking about bullying. And they were talking about how, you know, they're in their old country, they had one pair of sneakers or they had, you know, one backpack that they had to keep all year long, or one this, one that, you know, how this education was just going to turn around for them. You know, this is going to be different. Then you walk down the hall to another class. You know, they knew every rap song that's out right now. They they got the latest gear on. Is that the black class? But I'm reading at a third grade level and I'm in the seventh grade. <clears throat> but you see the difference? <laughs> yeah. I do. You I see mean, the difference? It's funny because <laughs> yeah. I, I spent some time in Phoenix. I went there a couple yeah, times yeah. before. Well, I love Phoenix. Uh, we well over. No, right. But not. But like when I was in Phoenix, um, and I met some teachers down there. It was funny just kind of hearing their difference with a kid that's quote unquote bad. Mm-hmm. He still sees the value in education. You know, he might act out a little bit in class here and there, but he knows that his education is a way out. 
But it's just like to your point earlier that we we have no value on that whatsoever. Like, where did that come from? Where we just think that it's not cool this, to be knowledgeable of things. This is a funny story. It's not funny, but this is how it works. How how when I people talk about education, um, the same thing I'm doing now. I was doing. I didn't have a master's degree, and folk wanted to pay me thirty. Thirty-five dollars an hour, same stuff, same quality stuff. Or I had to be in a room with somebody with a master's degree who I'm actually teaching how to do this. But now, because I got a master's degree, yo, that one fifty to four fifty, that's my range. Same stuff. So, so when I hear people say education, it is important. If you're trying to do something in life, it's really important. If you, I, this is the you gonna laugh at this. This is a shame. The kid tells me in the same group, the same kid who's talking about we can get him says, man, you know. I made $150. Okay. So let me tell you, $150, you buy a pair of LeBron James's and you're done. Maybe not. So so, uh, <laughs> maybe, so maybe the kid not. next to him says, man, you don't know what you're talking about. I can get LeBron James and something else because I only pay $170. See my point, sir? <laughs> you had $150. <laughs> yeah. No, but I'm saying he didn't even get the money. So how are you going to manage your money? How, you can't even count sneakers, your sneaker money. But you want to go out there without an education and make it in the world? That they don't think. I'm telling you, the basic stuff that we're talking about right now, you know, it's this not it's not common yeah. with these kids. I mean, that's, that's again, it's, because, but they don't know the history. Yeah. They, people don't vote. They don't. People die so you can vote. When I hear people talk about this crazy stuff, you know, lynching is real in some states. It's still in the books. I, I some states and is and you voting for this dude you voting for this dude that didn't states, take but you still vote, got the no after dark yeah but you voting for this guy <laughs> who votes for that florida and the, the, but that's my point you you voting for this guy that votes for that you know and i'm like yo you voting for somebody that says it's okay to hang you to lynch you and they're not going to say well devin what's your degree what's your educational background before we tie this rope around your neck mm-hmm. no that's it's, it's just for real. seeing somebody i can't recall exactly who it was i'm about to look it up but it was a politician who legit was like they were going through a bill yeah. and his actual question was like well yeah i agree with this but can we put lynching back on there i was mm-hmm. like what he said it's so calm and normal. Like that was just a thing to do. Like, yeah. But I, I but, we, but, we've been going. But on we but, but black but black while. people over, vote for him. Over, I know, but but the thing about it is people vote for him. Yeah. When, like if the guy tells me you're not gonna overturn the bill on lynching, I'm not voting for you because lynching, come on, man. I'm not talking about, you know, for look, I'm still waiting for my 40 acres in the mule. Yeah, don't don't with me. I'm still waiting for my 40 acres in the mule, but still got Biden there, you know. So. But, but, right. yeah. No, but that's a whole show. But I'm saying, and I'll get to that. Just like you know, um, we have to do better. Mm-hmm. We gotta, we gotta want better, and we gotta be willing to put the work in to get better. And it has to become a generational thing. You know, I, I do what I do because I really, you know, I got like today Wednesday. I'm tired, man. I'm tired. You, you know, I'm dealing with these kids and stuff. I'm tired. I mean, but if I don't do it, if, but if I don't do it, no boss is doing it. Yeah. You know, if, if I don't do it, these some of these kids, who's going to give it to them? You know, what what black man is going to stand up there and talk to your friend about yo? You got to make better decisions, you know, because most of them don't have a dad, you know. Most of them don't have that strong positive male role model. Most of us who are in a position to do something do nothing but talk about them people and those people and the people in those neighborhoods. You know, we there's no we don't do anything. That's actually we just and that's again ties back into our topic here tonight of like when you can wrap public up because I'll be going forever, man. Public it's schools being after. a do we think they should be responsible for teaching black history? Yes. Yeah. I think we should all kind of share our opinion on like well, opposing facts. I do yeah. believe that they should be. I agree. But then I also believe that it's a lot around. Like, I don't want to just hear it in February. I want to hear it all year round. It, it should I be also want to hear well, outside of the schools, like uh, people like us or other people, it, like sharing. It, black it should be year round. It, it should be year round. And, and, and I'm not, I, I think it should be year round. My issue with saying that, that, and I agree, but my issue with saying that it should happen at home is there's a lot of things that should happen at home that, that we know are not happening. Yeah, so once we realize it's not happening, I think it's society's obligation to fill in the blanks. I think society, if you want to get rid of poverty, if you want to get rid of just, just, just crazy stuff you see, society. you got to begin to start to fill in the blanks. But they don't want to get rid of it. That's the problem. That's, the, that's what I'm we're saying. Going to, we but, but, on that and never get it. I'm, but I'm saying, but that has to be the demand. Yo, you coming? You trying to get my vote? How do you feel about this? You know, yo, I'm not. You're not coming here kissing babies and giving high fives to people and, and giving out and giving <laughs> pounds of, and giving pounds to people, and then all of a sudden when it's you know after election day, we don't see you for another three and a half years. 
and you come back and make the same promises and, and we vote for you. Yeah. You know, so yeah, but it has to stop, man, and, and it doesn't stop because we allow and then we, we get caught up in the silly stuff. Yeah, before yeah. I was just about to go there. Oh, and that's a whole other show. So you're right. You probably was shaking up. Obama's head, man. He's yeah. down. Oh, no, that's my thing. Oh, oh he's they, made, a, they made a, a bottle big... of hot sauce. No, no. The thing, <laughs> that, the thing, that, the thing that got me was, yo, you, cause she had on a pair of Tim's. She had on Tim's. She had on a pair of Tim's getting off a plane. Never and that, and we were life. so happy the fact that she had on a pair of Tim's. And I'm thinking to myself, like, you got to be kidding me. <laughs> How about with Nancy Pelosi? She uh, her and all those people kneel. With the dashikis on. They for us. <laughs> well, see, I, I'm not going to. I'm not. See, I'm, a, I'm careful there because there are some white people who, and, and the civil rights movement wouldn't have went through it unless you had. I white, don't believe that a white person come for apart. us, but we're dashiki. I'm yeah. just saying. Uh, that's, <laughs> I mean, they some of them go a little too far. They some of them go. But some of them realize they got black in them too. Mm-hmm. You know, see, there's no pure reason. You know, they, some of them realize they got black. Some of them is pa- they pandering, like right in front some of them. Oh yeah, some of them do. They do. Some of them. I'm not. I would not disagree. I'm not going to disagree that they pander. I am not going to disagree. But this goes back to what I said. When you don't know history, it repeats itself. So every four years, they get out there, they pander, they make a bunch of promises, and they break. Them. <laughs> but to tell you how black folk is, but yet you hold Obama to a different standard, which is wild. you want to. He was supposed to liberate. And, and people get mad when I say you got a black politician in your neighborhood that's been in position for 40 years. Obama's been in there for four years and you mad at him because he didn't do anything. Dude, he right around the corner, dude, right around the corner in your office, you know, you still got the same crummy school. You can't even get a crossing guard a crossing guard in the corner of your block. Mm. But you you don't hold him accountable. But yet you want to see so that, I mean we have so much and, and we gotta wrap up, you're right, but there's so much stuff that American history, African American history can 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 impact this country in such in such a positive way. So I wanna know that what do you yeah. feel about like mm-hmm. uh them like I guess our education system including black history, like do you uh, think they should be doing that? It, it definitely has to be taught year mm-hmm. round. Uh, it should also be taught at home, but I'm also the mindset that I don't know if they still have like you know uh, African American clubs and different things like that in schools, but like, I feel like they should also GSU. take advantage of that as well too. Uh, as long as it's on more serious topics and you're actually discussing, you know, like history at hand and not just gossiping. Yeah, coming together. Like, yeah, should we put some posters up? Yeah, and actually coming together. Here we go. Get me started on that. Let's let's do it, Martin. My black fact for today, because I got one. I'm ready. Yasuki. Was a black samurai. Have you heard of this before? Actually, you know, yeah. I'm sure you, you know all the black facts. <laughs> but Yasuki was a man of African origin who served as a retainer and weapon bearer to the Japanese army from Africa, went to Japan and became a samurai. Yeah. And I think that in my mind is that's a that's movie. Yeah. But you know what's but crazy? Not gonna say it. It. But you know what, <laughs> what you know what's crazy about that? It also dispels this whole myth that black people are ignorant and can't lie. Right. We got people traveling across. But it also t- it also tells you how black people are valued in other cultures. Other mm-hmm. cultures versus here. <laughs> that the you know, that you go somewhere where you know is not a lot of you. Mm-hmm. And they judge you for your skill. They respect you. They mm-hmm. judge you for what your abilities and not because, you know, as as Martin Luther King would say, they judge you for your character, not the color of your skin. Mm-hmm. But I think it comes back to us. We gotta do a better job. We got to get out this whole gender war stuff to everybody on. We fighting against this person. Our war. We, we fighting this person because they have a different sexual orientation. We fighting this person because they're Republican or Democrat or Libertarian. Not our war. You know, we fighting all those fights. They're taking away voters' rights and nobody's saying a word. You know, um, you know, we have this 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 whole trafficking thing where young black girls are disappearing at an alarming rate across this and country. Yeah, nobody's and nobody's even saying, talking yeah, yeah. about it. There's so many issues that's plaguing our community, man. Our schools are underfunded, they're undersupported, they're understaffed. You know, it's so many things, man, that we should be fighting about. You know, and we're sitting here fighting, well, I should fight for, and we're fighting over trinkets. We're fighting over stuff that, that's, that's insignificant. We're fighting over stuff that five years from now, nobody's even going to remember. You know, you know, we will go, we'll drive 10 blocks to go to a McDonald's. You know, and I'm using that as an example. But we won't walk block a half a block to support somebody in our community. Yeah. You know, we don't. Are we spending countless you know, hours yeah. on Instagram, online, social media, but you won't take the time to read maybe a, a paragraph or a page or about I your just, history? I just gave you. Inf- won't take you that long. I just gave you information that's valuable. And your first question to me is, what's your credentials? 
I didn't say I was trying to save your life. I ain't say I was going to. Yo, I just told you something that you know works. That I say this is a proof. If somebody comes up to me and says, yo, I just received a million dollars. This is how I did it. I can prove. I'll do this with you. You get a million dollars. Yo, what's your credentials? Come on, man. Really? I mean, sometimes. I know it's something. No, Chris, you say if somebody came to you and said, "I just got a million dollars," I can scam. No, but if I can. No, but I'm saying no. But you, you're not listening. What I'm saying, if I can show you how to do this right now, right here with you, I'm not saying some send you away somewhere. You know, I'm saying somebody. You, know, I can show you this right now, standing here right beside you. You don't got to put up money. You just, right. I can yeah, show that's you. My I first can, question. So I'm, thinking, how much? So, so I'm thinking that you, you know, but but see, we but see, we your your credentials. You know, and there'll be a grant for a million dollars, and. 10 white groups to get together or 10 other ethnic groups to get together and apply for the grant and split it up. You can hear about that. You know, you know how many of us, we, you know, we all plot 10 different organizations apply separately for the peanuts. Mm-hmm. Yeah, we, we over, man. So it's time to say it. we, over. <laughs> we, we but, keep saying we end it. No, because this, this is a great topic. Like, it's important. Uh, it's important. And I think that we might even need to revisit this. Like I said, I want to get better at just sharing some some of our history on each of these episodes as well. So. Thank you guys for, for tuning in and listening. As always, Above Average Black Men, where we are here to empower, inspire, and uplift our community. Please, if you got topics, things that you want us to talk about, let us know. Share it with us. Join us. Come in on a live. You can send us some messages. Devin, I know you want to like, drop follow, it. subscribe, share. Oh, I was holding on to that one. <laughs> <laughs> if you want to interact with us, please do. Like he said, send us topics. Send us people you want us to interview. You know, support black businesses. Yes, yes, yes. Yo, we're responsible for each other. I feel like I think it's less of an individualistic way of doing things, and more of us needing to come together if we really want to see some change and, and progress in our community. So, again, thank you guys. Tuning out. Above Average Black Man. Peace out. Wait for that. <laughs> see you guys later, man. Wait for the song.